young man out of Britain, Ben Lauer, who used to do YouTube videos. And he was like many of those who are today performing videos. And you could tell that he was, in some instances, winging it. But the young man tried. He was okay. And he started out his videos with ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. And so I had been using that term, but I had not been using it on video. And when I heard him using the term, and then ladies and gentlemen, and the dream, 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 the dream, the dream team is in the house. You remember that song by the world class wrecking crew? Well, that's where I got the term originally. Technically, I originally got the term from watching old British films because individuals were referred to each other as ladies and gents, and Ben Lowry was from Britain. And so I started using it, and it was the way I introduced every video, along with the intros and the extras. And so I've been doing it ever since. And as I recall that, I give the credit for my continual use of that to Mr. Ben Lowry, who, I don't know if he's doing all right now. I heard that he had cancer. Get away. Sorry. Uh, Max, he's coming over near the wires on the computer and the uh, other solar components on this side of the room. And I need to make sure I, 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 they hear me on the phone. And so they think I'm not paying attention while they're in the house playing around. There's just, I'm doing some work and cleaning up in a certain area and they want to go over there and they're not going over there to mess up anything because <laughs> I'm cleaning up. All right. <clears throat> well, back to Ben Lowry. I do hope the young man's doing okay. Now, with that being said, there are a lot of people out there who realize that there's information being given out on this channel that nobody else is talking about. I keep saying the same thing. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about that. By, by the way, you see on the screen, it talks about that Cosby decision. Well, that case was sent to me. I never would have looked at the Bill Cosby case. Hold on. Penny, I will literally beat your behind. She's eating the carpet on the stairs. So, and they have chew toys. They'll be getting some more on Monday, but they have chew toys. And she's eating the carpet. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, the Cosby case would never have been covered by me, not because of what the case entailed, but because he was home. Like I said, I thought the case had been overturned and that he still had to go through trial again. That's what, that's what I reported in the first instance. But no, his case was vacated. They can't retry him again, even if they wanted to. Plus, the case is over almost... 15 years old started in 2005 almost 20 years old i apologize so it um it would not have mattered to me but because a young man said hey and he sent me the link oh i'm sorry this young man is incarcerated okay this young man is incarcerated he sent me the link and he said, I think you need to check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, I told him I would. And I decided to cover the Cosby case on video. Why? Because it was all the news. Every time I turned around, they were talking about Bill Cosby, trying to drag his name through the mud. And I told you guys, because I didn't remember this, and somebody reminded me yesterday, a young man whom I called, okay, 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 I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm hoping you all can still hear me, because Penny has just scratched my leg. She's letting me know that she wants to go outside. I, I told you, very well trained. Now, they, it, it took some work. Come on, move out of the way. God, I'm sorry, they, I have stairs leading in and out, out of the uh, fifth wheel. And when I'm going down the stairs, they will stop on the stairs. I think they're trying to trip me. I don't know, because right now Max is biting my pant leg. 
uh, apparently that's his routine. All right, let's go. Let's go. Come on. We haven't gotten the uh, word for go inside because you can't give dogs multi stop. You can't give them multi command. Nope. Has to be one word commands. They react better to that. And so I haven't given them the. And if you guys can't hear me, then that's too bad. You're just going to have to pardon me while I do what I have to do. Got to take care of the little children. Uh, by giving them one, one commands, they respond better. They understand better. Now, for what they can understand. It's not always they understand everything you say. Uh, that's why you see sit. Now, roll over can be one word if it's set in one word. But if you look at all the good trainers, it's only one word. Like I said, I do hope that you all could have heard me while I was outside because I walked away from the computer. Sometimes that doesn't happen. But they're in there. It's a 50 foot by 7 foot pen. So they have plenty of room, especially for their size. They can run, they can play, they can kick up dust, they can kick rocks if they want to. All right. We're going to talk about Cosby and then I'm going to tell you about this knowledge and information. Talk about Cosby just for a second, okay? The young man who I talked to you last night. He told me that his mother, I think he said mother-in-law, but I believe he also said, I think he said mother or mother-in-law, I don't remember. I was tired, which is why I didn't get up until 7 this morning. I did wake up at 2 in the morning. Hey, Star Trek Prodigy, I'm actually liking that show. Back to the subject at hand. He said that his mother thinks that it's because Cosby said that he was getting ready to try to purchase NBC. Go back, ladies and gentlemen. Go back to that year. Go back and take a look and see if this did not come about right after Cosby said he was going to purchase NBC. As a matter of fact, Mr. Cosby, I think you deserve our attention today. Guys, let's give Cosby our brief attention, and then we're going to talk about what I was doing this video uh, did Bill C O S B Y A N N O U N C E S A B I did to P U R Chase C H A S E C per Chase. I don't know why anybody want to be ch purchasing. What year did Bill Cosby announce his death? The, the, ladies and gentlemen, that's stupid. Of in the bubba bee bubba thee bubba. Okay, but cut them in the mama mucker. And let's just see. Because if you look at the case, the woman said that she was going around. 2015, <laughs> oh God, ladies and gentlemen, go back and look at the case. It was 2015 that they went after Bill Cosby. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2000, okay, pay attention. In 1992, there was an attempt. Bill Cosby trying to buy NBC from GE. I didn't know that NBC was owned by GE, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if it's still owned by uh, GE, but I did not know that. Okay? No, Bill Cosby wasn't framed for sexual assault. Bill Cosby was framed. You go back and look at that case, there was nothing about that case that makes sense. That case never should have gone to trial. Ever. Which is what the exact thing the Supreme Court said. That was a setup to begin with. Even the charges, the way they went about doing it, that was a vendetta, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody wanted to get his attention. They wanted to bankrupt this man.
but if he had enough money to buy NBC, Peacock! No, no, he wasn't buying it outright by himself. He had other investors, but he was going to be the headline, just like Magic Johnson when he purchased the rights to certain things. He was the front head. He was the thing to attract all the attention. That was going to get people to invest because Bill Cosby's name was on it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they were making sure that that wasn't going to happen. They took at least a decade off that man's life by putting him in jail. You guys do not understand the toll that being in a cage or a caged environment takes on someone, which is why when I decided to put my dogs in a pen, I decided that they were going to have room. Now, they still can roam around because I don't keep them in there 24 hours a day. As you've seen, I just put them back in. I had just taken them out and put them back in, and we walk and we talk and we have a good time because I don't want them being in a cage. But, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't research this before. But I, as I told you in a video yesterday, I've always known, as I said in that video, that there was something that he did <laughs> that they told him not to do. And he did it anyway. Why do you think R. Kelly is in jail? Look at all the years they claimed R. Kelly was doing this, that, and the other, and they never did anything about it. Then all of a sudden, they go after R. Kelly. And they go after him with a vengeance. And they convict him. Because they told the man to do something or not to do something, and he either didn't do it or he did it when they told him not to do it or to do it. That's the only time they go after anybody. Go back and look at all of the stars who they hide all of the stuff that they do wrong. That noise you're hearing in the background is my solar system. The freezer just came on because it's on a timer and it's letting me know that it's an over discharge because it's early in the morning and I've been having to reprogram that thing on that end. So I will go and take a look at it in a minute because it's getting on my nerves. All right. So go back and look at all of the stars and actors who all of a sudden something bad happens. They get a charge or they get arrested. I, I'm looking at so many of the actors who, like the young man who played Hakeem in, what you call it, uh, Empire. Domestic abuse. Apparently he kicks his wife in the stomach, according to them. And, and, and he's got a charge of domestic abuse. He doesn't do any jail time, but he's on probation. A stigma that will stay with him for the rest of his life, that he has a conviction. Ladies and gentlemen, what did he do that they didn't appreciate? Don't think it's simply a domestic violence issue. They've gone after everybody. Everybody. Especially in the latter part of their careers. So. I only talk about this for a minute because other people have talked about it. But see, unlike other people, I know how the industry works. I used to hang around this type of crowd, not the older actors that didn't care about them. I didn't care about the older generation actors. Yes, yes. Hey, how you doing? Nice day. Good day. How you? Bye bye. See you later. I didn't care. I went to their so-called parties. I went to those mini mansions that are on Adams. Boulevard in Los Angeles. Went to those stupid parties. I went to those stupid parties where they were doing the drugs. I didn't do anybody's drugs. That was not my scene. I did not hang around them. Yes, I knew that there were things going on in those little mini mansions. They're just bigger houses with a lot of rooms, but they called them mini mansions. They're, Adams Boulevard is full of these large houses. Okay. I've been to the parties in Beverly Hills. I've been to the parties in Hollywood. They were no big deal. It's just a bunch of people. Most of the people are nobodies. Only about seven or eight, maybe 10 people in the whole party is somebody who is worth 
hey, I know you. I've seen you on TV. Or, whoa, man, that song you did, you know, I I remember, because it was Los Angeles, I remember meeting uh, Mr. Wren from NWA. I was still a teenager, uh, still in high school. When I met Wren, my boy said, man, that's Wren. I said, so? Man, man, that's Wren from NWA. So? No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I liked Wren and NWA, but... I wasn't going to just, oh, look, oh, it's just, oh, that's it. That wasn't going to be me. That was never me. I don't get starstruck. They're just people. So I walked over to Ren with my boys. They're all blah, 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 blah. I said, you know what? I have one question for you. He says, okay. I said, why do you guys curse so much in your raps? I mean, do you have to? He says, and this is what he said, his words. We got to give the people what they want. Ladies and gentlemen, I understood that the moment he said it. And I said, you're right. Not that you're right, you got to give the people what they want. You're right that you have no other choice. Y'all don't understand what he stood, what he said. Understand what he stood, huh? Y'all don't understand what he stood. Because I understood what he stand. What he was standing is that the industry won't allow them to put out what they want to put out. The industry tells them what music to produce. What music to produce. The industry does that. They don't get to do that. They don't get to choose what songs they want to put out, no matter how much you guys think. Everybody listening to these rap songs thinking that it's the individuals talking about their life and their childhood and all that stuff. Y'all need to rethink that. Y'all really do need to rethink that. They don't get to put out what they want. They put out what the industry wants them to put out, and the industry will give them the phrases or the words or, no, you need to talk about this, and then you need to add a phrase like this, and you need to make sure you use this phrase in that song. Of course, they, they make it sound like their handlers is giving them a suggestion. Remember, everybody in that industry has a handler. That handler knows all of the business of that celebrity. That handler knows all the business of the celebrity. So when you find that there is a leak, it is the handler, for the most part, who's leaking the information. Why? Because that handler is there to gather information so it can be used against that party in the future. That's how you find out about, oh, and he did this win? Oh, my stars! Okay? When the woman talked about she called Bill Cosby and had her mother on the phone, do not think that Bill Cosby didn't already understand that somebody went and talked to somebody's police. Bill Cosby is a man of color. From the 60s, no doubt. There was no way in the world somebody going to call him with somebody else on the phone and he not know that somebody is trying to record the conversation, but they're not doing it through an audio recorder. They're doing it through having a witness. Can I get a witness? Oh, yes, I, I, I serve Jehovah. I apologize for that, y'all. I don't know why they keep coming into my conversations. I thought I had them on lockdown. Okay. Now, segue, the reason why I was doing this particular video, ladies and gentlemen, is because this is my ADA qualifying information, that document that you just saw that was up there a second ago. That's me letting my doctors, Social Security Administration, that's me letting everybody know, look here, you ignorant people, I'm tired of playing this game. My medical history is well documented. You see, I didn't know. All of my medical files shows all of my complaints, all of my gripes, all of my saying, what are you people doing? I told you that I'm having this problem, having that problem. It shows me complaining about all of the symptoms or the side effects of Dantirum, D-A-N-T-E-R-I-M, Dantirum. Ladies and gentlemen, Dantirum, when taken in its regular dosage can still cause the same side effects, but those side effects, 
usually subsides. Only with a few people are they permanent. However, the regular dose is just one milligram over a course of 10 milligrams. That's the maximum. I received 60 milligrams in one setting. Okay. So, the side effects appear to be permanent. Oh, that is so amazing. Well, you can take some um, nitroglycerin and, and, and you can mix some TNT. And, and then you can, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, some nuclear waste products. And you can go over to the Fukushima uh, nuclear reactor and you can jump in that water and drink all of it until your eyes don't exist anymore and then you'll be cured. Yep, that's what I was told. My friend did it and he's cured. Haven't seen him since, but yep, he's cured. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I was doing a video yesterday. It was based on, and I can't go into detail, sorry. This is me showing you where I get my information from. I had just did the Cosby video. You saw I did some adjustments on the microphone. And matter of fact, let me make sure it's recording now, because I did not make sure of that. But you saw I did some adjustments on the microphone during the Cosby video. I went back and listened to it. Now I'm going to take and undo those adjustments and do a little practice so that we get the audio finally done, because I don't usually do this. But what I'm doing right now is I'm checking to make sure that this thing is green. The reason why I'm checking to make sure that that's green, because that means it's picking up my voice. I have not changed this. Okay, see, and that's not supposed to be on that headset, because that headset ain't even plugged up. So we're going to go with Howie, Howie Duty. It's Howie Duty time. So, you know, let's go back with the vault device playback. Okay, that's going to be the first one. So we're going to leave that one where it is. Because the other one ain't even, the other headset ain't even plugged in. It's, it's still on the charger. Because I haven't even taken off the charger because I haven't used it. Because it only has a headset on one ear. Hey, where's my birds at? Who let the birds out? Okay. I did this video. This video was a current topic, a subject dealing with what's about to happen. I figured since I was hearing other people talk about it, I could give you the details of what I was allowed to see as far as what's about to happen and what we're about to go through. And so I did the video, 30 minutes long, not that long, and I showed proof of the information. And I was putting the video up. Ladies and gentlemen, as I watched the video go up, something said, you need to listen because you made those changes. You need to listen to the videos because you just did that Cosby video. And if there's no sound in that video, you're going to have to just do all that all over again. So I went back and I listened to the second video I did after the Cosby video because I didn't change anything. So I said, if the second video works, then that means the Cosby video worked. You know what I mean? The, the brilliant deduction, Sherlock. Oh, I'm Holmes today. Oh, you're home? Uh, that's a good place to be on a Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, I went back and I listened to that second video, and there was absolutely no sound. Checked it all the way through. Double-checked it. Even opened it up in a different program, just in case there was a snafu. Snafu? Snafu. Is that anything like Khan's? No, Khan had his own foo. Okay. They killed him. The original Kung Fu man, they killed him. Okay. Uh, David Carradine, they killed him. Okay. They, they, I don't know why they killed him, but they killed him. No, make it sound like it wasn't that, but you know they killed that mother. Ladies and gentlemen, that video did not record a single piece of sound. Because I did what so many people in the past have done. There's this, um, you guys know of him. You've heard of him. You don't know him, but you've heard of him. His name is David, King David. When King David went to Jehovah and said, hey, Jehovah, what should I do? Everything went perfect. But every time David relied on himself and did not go to Jehovah and asked Jehovah, hey, what is it I need to be doing? He got in trouble. 
every single time with Bathsheba, he knew he was supposed to turn away. That wasn't his. It's not yours. Stay away. He didn't listen to his conscience. He didn't go to Jehovah and he did something wrong. Then a baby was implanted in the woman as a result of the wrong. And then he tried to get her husband, who unknowingly had nothing to do with this, to have sex with her at home without knowing that he was trying to get her to do that. Even though he told him, go home, be with your wife, have sex with her, and, you know, so that she can get pregnant and you can go back to war. Because they were newly together, had been together only for a short time, but he loved her. And David committed premeditated murder. All because he didn't listen. All because he didn't go to Jehovah in the first place. There was another incident when it came to numbering the people. He didn't listen. Joab said, hey, Dave, what you doing? You know that the law says that we cannot number the people that Jehovah's got our back. You can't do this. Boy, you're going to go out there and do what I say, or I'm going to get somebody else to do it. And then you're going to look like a fool because you're supposed to be head of the army. You're the top general. You had better take care of this. So Joab went and did it. 30,000 people plus lost their lives. All because of him not going to Jehovah in the first place. See, when you go to Jehovah, he will provide some instruction. See, I didn't go to Jehovah. I didn't say, Jehovah, is it okay if I tell these people this? I know you told me that I had to keep it to myself. But, I mean, you let me tell them all the other stuff. So, yeah, you're going to let me tell them this too. That was my reasoning. It's a stupid reasoning. And it was demonstrated yesterday by there being no sound. Yes, many of you would have recognized what was going on. Many of you would have seen it because the evidence is there now. I was just pointing out and highlighting the truth about it and pointing out the truth about it as opposed to all of that speculation. I can't do that. I can't tell you guys what's getting ready to happen. I wish I could. I really do wish I could. Because so far, up to this day, everything else has happened exactly as I was allowed to see it. When I say, and many people won't understand this, and I know they're going to think, boy, you crazy. They're going to think, boy, you crazy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to get me because some of y'all don't get me. I was there. That's right. This time period in which we're living, I was here. It was as if I could breathe the air. I could smell the roses. Well, they weren't roses anymore. I could see what was really going on. Again, I saw this. The same as Paul would say, whether in the flesh or not, I do not know. Paul speaks about, in his case, being taken away to a third heaven, hearing words that it was unlawful for a man to hear uh, speak. How did he know that? Because he simply just knew. Do you know nobody ever questioned him on that? Well, actually, they did. If you go back to the Apostle Peter's writing, he speaks about how Paul, when they read his letters, some of it is a little difficult to understand. But he did not doubt the man. He just spoke about, hey, it's difficult to understand. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell people about their so-called experiences. I can only tell you about mine. I wish I could tell you, I imagine all of this, but I can't. I can't tell you I imagine it because that would be a lie. Do, do you kind of get what I'm saying? I can only tell you what I know. I can't tell you what I believe. Now, I was talking to some people about the, there are some people on this planet who suffer from what's known as schizophrenia. And I was, I've always been under the belief that schizophrenia, especially because people hear voices. See, ladies and gentlemen, I have been around people who, what other people would observe saying that they t they're they talking to themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I have observed 
those individuals. I did my own experiment without anybody else being around. And what I observed is that they are never answering their own question. They're never saying, man, why did you do that? Well, because I felt like it, mother. You see, you'll hear me on video having both sides of the conversation. That's how you know a person, quote unquote, isn't schizophrenia. Um, I was going to use the word crazy, but people don't like that word anymore. Because you'll hear me answering and doing both sides of the conversation because it's, how would you say, I know that I'm creating the characters. You know you're creating the characters. What characters are you claiming you're creating, huh, mother? You, mother. You ain't creating me, bro. I've always been here. You just didn't recognize that I was always here, but I was always here. And you want me to prove to you I was always here? Get your butt up out that chair right now. <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do all the time. You see, I can do that and have both sides of the conversation. But there are other people whom, if you stand by and you listen to them, and they're out there on them streets, they're having a one-sided conversation. They're answering questions. And when they ask a question, guess what? They're not answering that question out loud, which lets you know that they are talking to someone. People wanted to tell a person if they were hearing voices, it was all in their head. Yes, it is in their head. Technically, it's not in their head. It's in their ear. They're not hearing it in their mind. They're hearing it in their ear. Go and talk to somebody who has experienced the hearing of voices. That's why it is the hearing of voices. Now, you remember like with Moses? And you remember the other ones in the scriptures who heard God's voice, so to speak? Did they actually hear a voice out loud, audibly, to where everybody else could hear? Well, at times Moses did hear a voice audibly where everybody else could hear. Because it was for everybody else to hear. But all the other times, uh-uh, it wasn't that way. Okay, that voice wasn't audible because it wasn't that type of party. So I was telling people that in Jesus' day, you had the accounts of the legions. Because a person hears voices, that does not necessarily mean that they are experiencing a legion episode. That's not what that means. Now, they are trying to determine whether or not schizophrenia is genetic. That it is through the genes. They're finding that individuals who are twins, when they are separated, they tend to have such episodes. They, and uh, 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 not every time. The science is not indicating that this happens every time you separate twins. But however, when you do separate twins from one another, you will find that there is a degree of something going on there. Because twins have a relationship with each other that is unique. As a matter of fact, my two sisters, when they got in trouble or when they had arguments with each other, you could see it was different than with everyone else. You could see that they did not stay mad at each other, that they had each other's back. So what I am trying to say is I am not a clinical psychologist, although I took up psychology and a little bit of psychiatry, I am not a clinical psychologist that can sit up here and diagnose anybody or their grandmama. That ain't my job. I'm not qualified to do so, don't want to be qualified to do so, because that's a heavy weight. I will tell you that most psychiatrists, most psychiatrists and most psychologists don't know what they're doing. They're guessing. Why? Because we simply don't understand the mind. We simply don't understand enough about the mind, ladies and gentlemen. We want to understand, but we simply don't understand enough about the mind. The mind still baffles people. 
to the point where the doctors are still baffled as to how I can go through what I went through and come out the other end talking. Don't take this the wrong way, anybody. I am constantly baffled at individuals because I'm the smartest person I know. No, I, 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 I'm not patting myself on the back for that. That That's actually disappointing. Because of what all I went through, everybody else should be doing circles around me. Hold on one second, okay? I apologize for that. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, to put everything in a nutshell, oh, now I got to cough. One second. That's horrible. Give me one second. Don't want to cough in y'all ears. That would have broke some barriers, some eardrums, and a couple of other symbols of music, intro, oh, intermit, you know? All right. With that all being said, ladies and gentlemen, how do we get here? Well, that's not the question. If I had a couple people contact me regarding their mortgages, their debts. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I am not the debt guy. As a matter of fact, I do the best I can not to be the debt guy. That's why you don't hear me talking about the hour style money orders or any of that stuff. I'm not the mortgage guy. You do hear me talking about remedies for mortgages. That's not the bulk of my information. Okay? I, I am a scripture guy. You come to me, I will show you what the Bible says. I know you won't agree, but that's not my fault. I will only show you what the Bible says. It's not my job to convince you. <laughs> and that's, you got to go to somebody else for that. Because my job is to show you at least three times where the scripture says a particular thing. If it says it three times, that means it is backed by a witness. At the mouth of two or more witnesses, a matter is firmly established. That is the principle by which the Bible is read, and that is the principle by, by which the Bible was produced. Go ahead and take a look. Now, here's the thing. Most people say, but Armageddon only appears in the Bible once. The word Armageddon only appears in the Bible once. However, it is backed up by at least 100 or 200 more scriptures. It's referred to as the Great Day of Jehovah. Go ahead and take a look. Exactly what is explained in, about the word Armageddon, you'll find that it correlates to the mountain of Megiddo, where the site of decisions have been wretched. Reached? No, wretched. You wrenched? No, that's not, that's wench. Not wrench. Wench. I said wretched. Past tense. Oh, reach is present tense. I'm reaching for that. There you go. But wretched is past tense. Oh, you're doing tense. That's right. Okay. So, to get back to everything, there are a lot of people doing a lot of videos who claim that they're experts. Pay attention to the words that they're using. If I can do you the greatest bit of courtesy, pay attention to the words they're using when you're listening to someone telling you about the news. Notice how they don't use definitive words. And that means that this is la 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 la. They'll use words like I believe or it appears. The same thing the courts do. Whenever you see the courts using the word it appears or the plaintiff seems or it, the plaintiff is under the belief, okay? Please understand, then that means that that's not a fact. Most of y'all won't get that because you have not been trained to look for certain key phrases in documents, certain key phrases in wording. But with the courts, that's the best education you can get. Because if you want to find out what the law is, then you have to go to where the facts are. What is a fact? Something that is stated definitively. The courts, when they talk about a conclusion of law or a fact. Let's do that. If y'all don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. I mind. What do you mind? 
I mind everything. Oh my goodness, you're stupid. Yes, my mama told me that. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on one second. And I'm glad that I was able to educate someone on the difference between someone being clinically psychotic and someone just <laughs> acting like they're clinically psychotic. Oh, Lord. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you a fact. Pay attention. The basis for the common law rule is that any material alteration destroys the identity of a contract. And therefore, if a party to the contract who has not consented to its alteration were to be held bound by it, it would affect and impose a new contract to whose terms the party had never agreed. See, this is a fact. But if you go back and look at the actual video where I did all of the other case laws, hold on, let's do that. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I just want to show you the difference between a fact and a presumption. Do you notice how they said the common law rule? Now, remember, the courts have a different understanding of common law than you do. The court's understanding of common law is their so-called court cases. Your understanding of common law is the law that was common among the people, not the law that was common among the courts, okay? Whoo, lordy be, lordy be, lordy be. Uh-oh, my system did it again, y'all. My system, them, let me go ahead and do this. I, it, it keeps switching. Tom keeps on switching, switching, switching. Into the future. Hold on one second. Okay, that's my fault. I have several connections to connect to the internet, and it switches. It switches like a prostitute on Florence Boulevard. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. That didn't sound like it was very nice for you to say. I mean, what does that got to do with anything, a prostitute switching on Florence Boulevard? I don't know. Oh, okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, many people are having a difficult time because they want to enter into the courts, but they're finding that there are so many rules and so many procedures, that there are so many rules and so many procedures. As I told all of you, if you want to understand the courts, you go over the first 20 rules of the courts. All the other rules you can go over later, but the beginning of anything, go over their first 20 rules. That will give you basically, and I knew it was going to say that because the other one, I took the information out. Okay, this one I didn't. So let me fix my inquiry. Well, anyway. You go over the first 20 rules, and you'll basically have an understanding of the courts. Uh, to affect the secret contract alteration that the, uh, oh, God. Alicia, how come you, you're showing up now? I've been on this for a minute. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Now, would you get on out of the way, Alicia? This is an automated thing. When you get to a certain uh, amount, that shows up. Okay. So, uh-oh. Uh, 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 Alicia, I did not ask you to select a plan. Nope, don't. We ain't doing that. Mm -mm -mm. Black Friday is over, Alicia. Don't know what y'all doing here because I didn't select nobody's plan, okay? Y'all messing with my business now. Um, No contracts. 30-day money-back guarantee. No hidden fees. So this is a monthly plan. And ladies and gentlemen, in the future, possibly. I don't like monthly. As a matter of fact, the fact that they're able to post these cases and charge people, remember, you're paying for the service. You're not paying for the information. You must understand, that's how the company is able to post these court cases that they don't have a copyright to. But remember, these court cases are in the public domain. So that's how they're able to do that. That's how they're not getting away with anything. They are providing a vital service. Pacer is the same way. 
that's why Pacer gets away with the junk that it does. See, the only thing is the court allows Pacer to have access to the electronic filings. Case text does not have the documents that are filed. Hold on. Uh, yeah, we'll leave that. Okay, we'll do it this way. This one won't be too long. I took out enough words to where it won't get upset because of all the words. Okay. So let's scroll up. Because what goes up under New York contract law, the parties must clearly express their intentions that a subsequent agreement supersedes or substitutes the old agreement. That's why you'll see statements in a document saying this contract supersedes any other prior agreement and or replaces blah, blah, blah. That's what the renewal, that's why you do a notice of change in terms of agreement. There are a lot of people out there who are doing contracts and are not putting in the right language. Moreover, the, it is horn book. Man, where the horn book? You know, the books that used to have, that you sit on the uh, altar? That's right. Ten Commandments originally used to sit on the altar, and the altar had horns on it. It's all this horn book. I don't know if that's what it means. Okay, I can't tell you that, but uh, do your research. That a contract not perform on either side may be discharged by a subsequent oral agreement changing its terms, whereby a new contract is in effect substituted for the old one. Ladies and gentlemen, a contract not performed, as long as one of the parties performs under the agreement, it becomes a contract. Okay, it is Hornbrook that if somebody creates a contract and neither one of the parties performs underneath that contract, ain't nobody bound by that agreement. In other words, the modification must affect the material alterations of the party's rights and obligations before it can be said that the party intended a new contract or agreement. So it must affect the party's rights and obligations in order for that new conditional acceptance contract to have validity. There is more to putting together a contract than putting together a contract. Now, wait, 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 hold on. Pay attention. In other words, that lets you know that up here is a presumption. But the question is not whether any changes were made to the contract. It is whether existing rights were significantly altered. See, significantly altered? Who makes the determination of significance? This is a presumption. This is a presumption. And that's significant? Significantly altered? That's the court leaving itself a way out. A new contract means a new agreement. Oh, you are so smart. A new contract means a new agreement. Oh, I thought it meant an old agreement because it said new. <laughs> and a new agreement between the parties to an old one contemplates the actions of both parties in making it. In other words, it has to be doable and workable. And it must be a mutual agreement requiring actions by both parties. It cannot be one-sided. These are elements of a contract. Now, the only reason why I took you here was to show you the difference in understanding what the court is saying and not just taking the words for what they say. Because before this statement is a presumption, that's always going to be the case. In concurrence of the parties in making alterations and in the meeting of their minds in forming the new undertaking must have been present. The meeting of the minds informing the new undertaking must have been present. In other words, it has to be in the contract. Okay, thereby discharging a surety and concurrence of the parties in making alterations and in the meeting of the minds informing of the new contract. Again, this is a presumption. Why? Why is that a presumption? Because the law says that this new contract, as long as the parties performed under it, and it had 
mutual binding uh, obligations on the parties. In other words, each party was obligated to do something. If I don't do this, uh, excuse me, if I do this, you have to do that. If you don't do that, I don't have to do this. If it's mutual, hey. But notice, it is obviously there is no agreement of meaning of the minds here. Really? Wait, wait, wait. Obviously? Where's the obviousness at? Because of how they worded everything. The obviously is a presumption. Okay, I don't know the case. Now, here's a conclusion. Remember I told you the courts reads conclusions? We conclude that if the essential elements of the terms of a contract have been transformed, altered, changed, amended, a new contract will be deemed to supersede the old one. So, many people are having a difficult time when it comes to the courts and understanding how to read their junk because they do, everybody wants to refer to it as doublespeak. It is not doublespeak, it's presumption. What is a presumption? A presumption is something that is possible, that is not precise. A presumption leaves room for speculation, possibilities. A presumption is not precise. It is not finite. It gives so many other different options. Courts often speak presumptively. They never speak with definitiveness. That's why I told the courts, I, I told actually Marcos Lopez, this ignorant, uh, what do you call it? I think he's a judge now. I, I don't know if he's still a magistrate. I think he may have been bumped up to being a judge, but I, I don't. I don't care. Marcos Lopez. I told him. I said, "Hey," and I object to the use of legalese. What do you mean by legalese? You know what I mean by legalese. Are you talking about the court's legal terminology? Well, if you don't understand legal terminology, then I guess I'm going to have to appoint an attorney. Oh, it's not the fact that I don't understand legal terminology. I said I object to legal terminology because it's not English. And there is no justification in law for the use of legalese. If you're going to use legalese, which is not English, then you're going to need to provide an interpreter who must be an interpreter only. That's what an attorney is, ladies and gentlemen. You guys don't understand that? An attorney is your interpreter with the court. It's just they took that idiot and they gave him general power. The next time the court says we're going to appoint counsel for you, oh yeah, limited power of attorney? Yeah, you can you can appoint limited power of attorney. That's your comment. The next time somebody says, oh, you have limited power. Oh, yeah, I'm changing those terms. Somebody gave you general power. <laughs> you ain't got no general power over me, mother. No, you have limited power, mother. All right? And there will be no more discussions about that. This is my power of attorney we're talking about. I'm the grantor of that power. Because the courts presume that when you ask it to appoint an attorney, you're giving it full power. Hey, full power! We're, 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 we're being sucked into the wormhole! Full power! Okay. The courts presume that you're giving it full power. Thus, it appoints an attorney with full power over you. Go ahead and look at the attorney-client rule. It's not a law. It's an attorney-client rule under Corpus Juris Secundum, Volume 7, Section 4. Hold on. Hold on. Let's, hey, let's see if it's in case text. I'm interested in this. See what happens when we start a video and we just start talking? The subject that we can cover? Mama, he uncovering things. That's right, honey. That's what he do. He just, the system, he just uncovers all their little secrets. The A-T-T-O-R-N-E-Y C-L-I-E-N-T P R I V L Um I know I spelled privilege wrong, but this is what happens when I'm tired, y'all.
we're going to put this in here grants the attorney general power of attorney now that's a lot of attorneys in that statement isn't it general power means full power total power means all power that's why you'll hear chief general counsel do you understand they're saying that that idiot has full power the attorney client privilege belongs to the entity and the entity's management holds the power to assert or waive the privilege okay the entity you okay you the attorney client privilege in general the attorney client privilege is the oldest privilege for confidential communication its purpose to encourage full and frank communications between the attorney their clients and thereby promote a broader public interest in the servants of law oh lord and i use the word privilege um so we don't want attorney client privilege We're going to put attorney-client relationship because they're going to use the word privilege. We're going to take the word privilege out so it's not the main focus because they focused on the phrase attorney-client privilege. And we put attorney-client hyphen because this is what they mean. To mean that the power of attorney authorizes an attorney, in fact, to practice law. Whoa! For the same reason does not authorize a non-attorney trustee to practice law. Really? Why not? The more reasonable interpretation of the statutory language is that a power of attorney authorizes an attorney, of, in fact, to act on behalf of the principal as client in an attorney-client relationship. Look at that. That is, the attorney, in fact, may make decisions concerning litigation for the principal, but a non-lawyer attorney, in fact, is not authorized, blah, blah, blah. That's what they're going to say. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you know how to argue that point, an attorney, in fact, is an attorney. It's the statute that they're reading. No, the power of attorney is the power of attorney. The fundamental to the fiduciary relationship is the duty to account. Such duty extends to an attorney, in fact, acting pursuant to a power of attorney. You have the same powers as an attorney. That's why it's called power of attorney. Sorry, I apologize. They made the attorney thing a statutory thing. By nature, the attorney-client relationship is one in which the attorney expressly represents his or her client and serves as the client's agent. Oh, it says in situations as in the Platt case, Platt case, where the client is an organization rather than an individual, the client may only be able to speak and petition through the attorney. Pay attention. In an official relationship, when an organization is related rather than an individual, the client may only be able to speak and petition through its attorney. Ain't that something? In Texas, the appointment of attorney, in fact, creates an agency relationship. It's an administrative thing. Okay? We'll go here. When attorney-client relationship exists, apparent authority of the attorney to represent the client is presumed. Oh, it's a presumption! Yes, full power of attorney. It's presumed. Not proved. It's a presumption. Are you kind of catching what I've been saying all this time? Once you understand that the courts operate on presumption and that most of what they say is not a fact, noting that the attorney client relationship is a quintessential principal agent relationship and the client retains ultimate dominion and control of the underlying claim. Yes, you can retain. You retain control through the attorney. That's, that's what they're not saying here. This is the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is misleading people into thinking that they didn't just say that the attorney-client, remember they put the hyphen there. So let's find out what this means. 
okay? They put the hyphen there. That's why I put the hyphen. I want to show y'all. Let me show you the way, okay? I want to show y'all what they're really doing. Because there are people out there, again, how do I know all of this stuff? Because after the operation, oh, did I do, I did it, I did it backwards, y'all. Look, we got to do, we got to type it in. Uh, we don't want privilege. C. J. S. Seven. No, we got to do that backwards. We're going to put four and then we're going to go a little bit more. Seven. Seven C. J. S. Volume seven, subsection four. Should I hire an attorney? This one has been up here for years, ladies and gentlemen. This has been up here, volume seven, section four. Let's find out, should you hire an attorney? I want this one right. No, that's PDFs. I don't want a PDF. Hey, this one says, see, corporate jurist secundum, section clearing client. Let's go here. I want, this is another PDF. I don't want the PDF. I want the actual document. Okay. We consult the latest corpus juris secundum, legal encyclopedia, volume seven, section four, for the answer. We're gonna look at the answer below. Below? I gotta go all the way down there to get the answer? Yes, you do. I come from the land down under. What? Wait, 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 why was my connection interrupted? Who's trying to intercept my connection? Anybody know who's trying to intercept my connection? Shouldn't be messing with my connection, should they? Somebody interrupted my connection. Who are you connected to? Man, I'm connected to everybody. That's how I get things done. I got connections, mother. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this document is only one page. So we're going to show you corpus juris secundum so that you understand the, the attorney-client privilege and that the attorney-client thing, pay attention. The attorney-client thing, pay attention is general power. An attorney's first duty is to the court and to the public and not to the client. Whenever the duties of his client conflict with those he owes as an officer of the court in the administration of justice, the former to you, the client, must yield or yeah, must yield to the latter. The one and that's the see former and latter the former means the last one that's spoken of. The latter means the first one that was spoken of. The clients are called wards of the court in regards to their relationship with their attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, the clients are called wards of the court. What is a ward of the court? Do your research. So when you're standing in court with an attorney, because the attorney has general power, you have no rights. You are a ward of the court, and the court is your guardian. You're incompetent. That's why you tell the court, hey, I'm sorry, what you doing? That's my power. No, that, it, we going to change that rule. So in Puerto Rico, this is what I was doing. I was putting together motions for people, and I was temporarily suspending the power of attorney. Yeah, I was temporarily suspending the power of attorney through an affidavit because it's my power. I was temporarily suspending the power of attorney, telling the court exactly what I needed to have done, and then ordering the attorney to do these things and then reinstituting the attorney by a limited power of attorney. That's why they said, we got 27 affidavits on the desk of the uh, prosecutor, the lead prosecutor, and we don't know what to do with them. It shut down the entire system, people, for three months. No cases. All cases were being continued. All 27 of those cases were being continued. I was put in lockdown because I did that. Okay? Whoo! Because I told you I went there to rip the beast apart from the inside. Now, you show me someone else who shut down an entire 
court system for three months. This is the whole island of Puerto Rico. Those 27 cases was continuing so many other cases. They couldn't go forward because they had to figure out a way around the substitution of power of attorney. So what they did is they separated me from all of those 27 individuals and called them in the court and got them to say other things on the record that they shouldn't have been said. I just heard of a case yesterday where a lady was going in and she is a HUD counsel. HUD counsels can speak in bankruptcy court. Do your research on HUD counsels. Well, she's a HUD counsel, but she went into court and her client was there. And the client didn't know that she was supposed to speak and say, this is my HUD counsel, because they had not spoken in advance. And the court kicked the case out because the person didn't know what the judge was saying because he was using leading communications. They're going in on a reconsideration. Uh, I said, you need to do a reconsideration. And you need to explain to the court what you're explaining to me. And she says, yeah, we're going to do a reconsideration. It'll be filed on Monday. I said, okay. Again, 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 that let her know that I know what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do Corpus Juris Secundum, the next one. Corpus Juris Secundum assure, assumes, presumes the court will operate in a lawful manner. If the accused makes this assumption, he may learn to his detriment through experience that certain questions of law, including the question of personal jurisdiction, personum jurisdiction, may never be raised or addressed, especially when the accused is represented by the bar. Sometimes licensed counsel appears to take on the characteristics of a fox guarding the hen house. Yes, because he represents the court. I told you I've had the case in Puerto Rico. After I did this, they then forced two attorneys on me. A law professor who was a piece of, anyway, and this old idiot forced both of them on me, and they both testified against me in open court. Testified against me in open court. Ain't that interesting? They put the jurisdiction once challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, this doesn't actually, this gives you the wording of corporate juris secundum. The only problem is it doesn't give you the corpus juris secundum. You, you follow me? And you know what? I'm interested in this case right here because I haven't read this case. The burden of proof of jurisdiction lies with the asserter. The court is, the, is only to rule on the sufficiency of the proof tendered. Okay. The origins of this doctrine and law may be found in Maxfield versus Levy, 1797. You know what? I would love to look up that case because that's 1797. That's the beginning. See, that's the foundation. So let me download this. Man, could you send me a copy of that? You better look at the name that's on this screen and go right there and download it yourself have me sit up here and do all the work for y'all what's wrong with y'all told y'all initially i was doing this video to let you know that i tried to put out a video yesterday and if i don't have the authority to put it out he won't let me he won't let me tell you everything i know do you are you understanding that that i can't tell you everything he won't let me what do you mean he won't let you the god i serve gave me information and allowed me to know something. Sorry, can't type in text. Allowed me to know some things. And because he allowed me to know, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the right just to tell you. Oh, you can't reveal the secret? You better believe it. I have to be trustworthy. He requires that of his servants. Are you a servant of the true God? You better believe I is. Oh, well, that's pretty good. I used to be. Then you need to get to be because you ain't got no more time to be playing around. Don't be telling me what I ain't got. Uh, Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I got to get up because I don't see the puppies. And what are y'all doing? Why y'all just sitting up there basking in the sun? Huh? Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, the two dogs literally 
were sitting up there letting the sun hit them. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, but if you guys don't understand, it's about animals. I learned it with my iguana. Okay? The sun helps the animals digest food, especially an iguana. That's why you put them in the sun. They'll sit there and they'll just pose in the sun, letting the sun hit them. We all were created for the same purpose and reason, to live. And in order to live, the sun provides a whole abundance of what we need in order to live. So that's why I built the cage for the dog so that they can get sun. They can't just be in a house all day. So that's what I observed the dog's doing. No, I don't want to register you. No, you are a piece of junk. Internet download manager. I will put the crack in. Oh, you on crack? Yes, I'm on crack. I will put the crack in for that later. I want to go to that one, and then we're going to go ahead and let y'all go. Now, again, those of you who hang around to the end of the video, you get to get tidbits like this. The people who only watch the first seven minutes, they get what they get. Now, I told a young man, the young man I spoke with yesterday, that I was going to hammer him with you guys so that they knew what had happened. He is one of the original sap packers. Original! 2017! Ladies and gentlemen, he received all of the information, all of the emails. He even has his 98 series number. He even has a CPN. You know what he doesn't have? He doesn't have the actual sat pack because he never sent it back in. And all I got to say is, Lord have mercy. This is the actual Corpus Juris Secundum, ladies and gentlemen. They actually took the information and put it in here. We consult the latest Corpus Juris Secundum Encyclopedia, attorney client. And it's not, I don't think it's attorney and client. I think it's attorney hyphen client. But Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Uh, and the office of attorney is indispensable in the administration of justice and is intimate and peculiar to the relationship and vital to the well being of the court. Oh, and the attorney has a duty to aid the court in seeing that actions and proceedings in which he is engaged as counsel are conducted in a dignified and orderly manner, free of passion and personal animosities, and that all causes brought to an issue are tried and decided on their merits only to aid the court. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. What is the legal relationship between attorney client, another corpus juris secundum, subsection 2, hyphen 3? And the term is synonymous with attorney. Therefore, any advertising himself, anyone advertising himself as a lawyer, holds himself out to be an attorney, an attorney at law, a counselor at law. Huh. If one appears before any court in the interest of another and moves the court to action, which respects any matter before it of a legal nature, such a person appears as an advocate. As that term generally is understood, the phrase as an advocate in the representative capacity as used in the statute regarding the practice of law implies a representation distinct from officer and or regular administrative corporate employee representation. Ladies and gentlemen, appear before the court when you want to do so as an advocate in a representative capacity. When you want to <laughs> represent yourself, you say, oh, no, I'm appearing before the court as an advocate in a representative capacity. Love that, don't you? I This right here, y'all need to download this document like I did. Okay, we're going to save copy because it's got some problems. See, it ain't got no problems no more. Problems go. Clients are court ward of the court in regards to their relationship. I am appreciating these people for updating this and adding this information to this. 
Wards of the court, infants or persons of unsound mind placed before the court under the care of a guardian. Ladies and gentlemen, are you of an unsound mind? Well, stop letting them say you are by giving you an attorney. Go back into court if they gave you an attorney and they didn't tell you this. They're going to say, well, you're supposed to know the law. This is not the law. These are rules. This is not the law. Because if pled by an attorney, they admit the jurisdiction. The attorney admits the jurisdiction. Do you know how the attorney admits the jurisdiction, ladies and gentlemen? The attorney admits the jurisdiction by submitting, doing a notice of appearance on the record. The first thing the attorney puts on the record is a notice of appearance, thereby submitting to the court's jurisdiction. Appearance means submitting to the court's jurisdiction. That's what's going on. Hey, what's going on? Okay, I do need you guys to understand that you saw how it involves an infant. That's why we refer to the infant estate. So I do need you guys, do your research, get more understanding. Hey, there are nine more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, I don't want to see all that junk. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for information like what I just got with that PDF. So I'm going to suggest you guys do the same thing with the PDF, okay? And... Give me what I'm going to do is I'm going to add corpus juris secundum to the title. Not going to call it what I initially was talking about. We're going to put this last part in there because that's what you need to know. Okay? Now, look, I got to go. I know you guys can't stay. Uh, but because you can't stay, uh, uh oh, why you don't want an attorney? This is the one that I knew about. This is the one that most people knew about from Family Guardian. If you have not been to the Family Guardian website, Family Guardian and what's the other one? See, they actually have a copy of the Corpus Juris Secundum page. This is what I actually went and got. I, You guys, those of you who have been paying attention, you saw, and it is attorney and client. It's just the courts usually put attorney hyphen client, which is what I've always seen. Oh, look, ward of the court. And in proprio persona, if pled by an attorney, they admit the jurisdiction. Look at that. In one's own proper person. Absolutely not! <laughs> okay. And I agree with the family guardian. Ladies and gentlemen, the family guardian, um, this is the information from the PDF that we just saw. They just added more information for the benefit of all of us. So what I am saying to y'all, y'all need to understand what's happening when y'all get an attorney. So that's why you give the attorney limited power. Because why? Because he cannot strip away your rights and make you a ward of the court if he has limited power. But again, we did what's called the custody class arbitration for all of those individuals to whom I did petitions for in Puerto Rico. Because I told them I was not going to forget about them. So we're getting ready to start getting those arbitrations taken care of. We're going to hold the United States responsible for those arbitrations. Because those courts have been blocking access to confirmation of arbitration awards when the law says that the courts must grant the arbitration. There is no leeway. The courts don't have a choice. That is the law. Sorry, Congress wrote it that way. And the Supreme Court has held that the word must means must. Doesn't mean possibly. Doesn't mean it's a presumption. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when you guys get a chance, go and take a look at this. Read it. Understand it. You know what I'm saying? I got to go. Y'all take care now. Hey, did you notice how there was no music? Ah, that won't happen too often. Take care, y'all. Got to go.